This video is an introduction to the mission planning and risk assessment methods used in UAS operations. As you begin planning missions, this should help you make good decisions on whether to modify or scrub a planned flight. Each phase of flight has a different risk profile. By thinking of the UAS as a system, you can make good decisions and effectively manage risk. You may mitigate a risk in any phase of flight, but in all cases, you must reach an acceptable level of risk for all phases. You assess each of these areas in the same manner to come up with a composite score. Here is a great chart to assess risk based on our size of aircraft. Clearly, a Group 1 aircraft has less risk because of its weight. Our small UAS operations will focus on these type of operations and they have the lowest risk. The FAA uses an acronym to help us think of risk management and how to make go, no-go decisions. The first of the two is PAVE. Pilot refers to your fitness, qualification, illness, and how rested you are. Aircraft refers to the UAS condition, how it was maintained, any other issues that you may have with the equipment. The environment, which includes several things, especially includes weather. External pressures, which include pressure to take unnecessary risks, are one of the things that you must be keenly aware of. Prior to each flight, you should evaluate each of these areas to ensure you understand the possible risks. Weather is very important in that process. If any of the paved decision areas result in a no-go decision, and you cannot mitigate the risk by reducing the consequences or developing a new alternative, you must cancel the flight. The second model is called CARE. Each of the areas in CARE evaluate each of the areas in PAVE. It involves first by evaluating the consequences and determining the level of need. How important is that you make this flight? Second, looking at alternatives. Can I reduce this risk by flying at a different time? After applying this to each of the factors in PAVE, which assess your readiness to fly, CARE is an acronym that we can use to remember how we make go, no-go decisions for each of the PAVE areas. Consequences, what is the level of need? Alternatives, is there something that can reduce existing risk, such as flying at a different time? And R is for reality. Is there an unrealistic expectation, or is some of my data questionable? External pressure in care asks you to consider whether you would make this decision regardless of external pressure. Once you look at a situation and decide that it's pressure that's causing you to make the decision, that realization will lead you to make the right decision, often not to fly. In the manned aircraft world, we often say, it's better to be on the ground wishing that you were in the air than in the air, wishing you were on the ground. In the UAS world, this holds equally true. One helpful way to perform a risk assessment is to list all the potential hazards. Then estimate the probability that that hazard or risk could occur and the consequences or the severity of that event. Then develop possible mitigating actions. You do this over and over and rescore until the risk is acceptable. Typically, a score of 1 on a scale of 1 to 4 indicates an acceptable level of risk for you to go forward with your flight. While the FAA does not designate how you set your scores, most of these are pretty logical. For instance, if the weather is less than 3 miles visibility or 500 foot ceiling, you cannot legally fly. Therefore, you should assign the highest score to weather. In some cases, regardless of the overall score, you should make a no-go decision. While the FAA does not require you to use a particular method, the risk assessment checklist listed here is a best practice and a similar method is used by most pilots. The important point to take away 
is that you must develop this first. And if you're unable to reduce the risk to low, then you should cancel the flight. If you wait until you begin the flight to develop the checklist, you will inevitably allow external pressure to reduce the score and cause you to make a bad decision. Today we discussed system thinking, mission planning, and risk management tools to plan your UAS flight. It is a best practice and recommended for you to build your own risk factors and evaluate them before each flight. Should you consider wind, ceiling, your own personal proficiency as a pilot? What other factors could impinge on your flight? Develop your own personal checklist using tools in the Blackboard course and plan each time you fly. May all of your flights be safe and productive.